All right, so this is my second video on plasmatry and PID tuning. Um, basically, just wanted to make a more refined video, one that would uh, just kind of sum everything up quicker, give you guys a quicker uh, explanation of the steps to take to actually tuning your quad. So I'll summarize the steps, update for 3.4 and plasma tree, uh, quicker tuning steps, and I'll also show you guys my tuning session. Um, basically I just reset all my PIDs to the plasma, well, plasma tree starting stock, what you should be using. Um, and then I just did a quick little afternoon tuning session and quickly tuned up my quad a second time uh, just for this video. So to begin tuning on plasma tree, you want your uh, the physical setup of your quad to be in uh, its prime condition essentially. Um, this is the same thing that I mentioned in my last video. You want to have uh, your propellers to be as new as possible. I mean, if they're you know got a little edge here or there that's not too clean, it's not too terrible, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you want your preferred battery that you fly with most of the time. You want to make sure all your screws and everything is tightened down as good as possible. Um, make sure everything's tight on your frame so that you're not getting any resonant frequencies or any bad reactions caused from noise from the vibrations of a loose screw or anything like that. Um, Soft mounting your flight controller is obviously a really common practice to take care of the noise situation. Um, and obviously if you have less noise, you have a cleaner gyro reading. Um, and then obviously you want your filters to be set up properly, so you want your... Uh, in Betaflight 3.4, there's the two PT1s on gyro and on D-Term. Uh, and this actually takes care of noise pretty well. Um, in the past little while I had the idea to throw a notch filter on there as well just to crush all of the excess noise that I was having that wasn't being cleaned up by the filters that I did have um, but at the same time uh, the latency is relatively low so I don't think we'll have too much of a problem there some of the new features in Betaflight 3.4 have actually really cleaned up the overall performance of the quad. Um, they refined the PID controller process. Um, they've added a bunch of features like iTerm rotation, smart feed forward, and RC, uh, different form of RC smoothing where they're actually using a filter um, instead of the interpolation setting. And that's, I mean, it's been pretty interesting. It's giving quite clean uh, RC command readings. Um, new default filters and PIDs, those are something that's really improved on Betaflight 3.4. They overhauled the whole uh, stock PIDs that you'll get when you first flash your flight controller. Um, and honestly, like from the videos that I've seen of people flying on them, they're really, really good. Mine, my quad doesn't handle them too well, but a lot of quads handle them super well and then as well as that there's also additional discussion going on in the forums where uh mainly a guy by the name of Cid uh or cdz snooze um i call him citizen snooze just because it that's what it looks like to me in my head anyway <laughs> um so yeah it's ctz snooze though. um he has suggestions for a new, or, well, not new, sorry, uh, but slightly different settings depending on your flight style. So if you're flying freestyle or race, he has different suggestions for both, and both are supposed to improve the flight performance depending on whatever your preferred flight situation is. So uh, I'll leave a link down below, and there will be, um, it'll be in my Dropbox folder. There will be two text files that contain his changes. Uh, I slightly tweaked a couple things, but there's a, I wrote a note in there that you can read up on. Um, just on what I, the slight tweaks that I made. So there's settings on Betaflight that you don't want enabled. Um, 
And these ones, what they do is they change the uh, they change your PID value depending on different variables. So, for instance, uh, anti-gravity will change your I term depending on sudden throttle drops and to try to control the quad when it's essentially in that anti-gravity state. If you you know do a punch out and then you immediately let off like quickly let off throttle, it'll control it in the air and make sure that it stays steady. Um, D set point weight you want off, anti gravity I already mentioned, uh, throttle pitch attenuation or TPA. Um, basically, you don't want your throttle to be impacting the pids at all. The uh, TPA increases your pids based on the throttle value. Um, and then there's an additional additional setting in Betaflight 3.4, and that's the smart feed forward feature and. Honestly, my understanding of this isn't too clear. I had it enabled for a little while, and then after using it, I noticed that my plasma tree logs started being slightly strange. Uh, basically, my uh, over 500 degree per second line was deviating way off of, from my under 500 degree per second line. Um, so I turned that off by the suggestion of uh, Flow, the creator of Plasma Tree. Then I've retuned my quads since then, uh, just to make sure that everything's cleaned up and it's prop or flying properly. So then to start, basically you want to set both your uh, roll and pitch pids at the same time. Um, set your P15, I to 10, and D to 5. Um, yaw is passive, so I just kind of leave it at my default of 85 for P and whatever the beta flight default is, I can't quite remember. Um, the beta flight default for P right now is 65, I believe. So, I mean, that should be fine. Uh, it's a pretty passive um, factor of the quad. It doesn't affect it as much as rolling pitch does. Um, you can just use the beta flight 3.4 defaults if you want, instead of 15, 10, and five. Uh, for roll and pitch. Um, the beta flight defaults are really good and you can just tune from there essentially. After you get your PID set up, if you do decide to go with the plasma tree route and go 15, 10, and 5 with for uh, pitch and roll, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go outside, uh, fly for about 20 seconds, and then land. Um, I usually just do them line of sight. Uh, you can do them FPV if you want, but I find it's a little more cumbersome and tricky just to have the goggles. So after each time you land, you're gonna increase your p-value on pitch and roll by a value of five, um, and then take off, do another flight. I usually do flights of about 45 seconds, personally. Uh, it gets more data, and I'm not the best line of sight pilot, so it gives me more time to actually put enough inputs on pitch and roll uh, so that there's enough of a data reading for it to process for plasma tree to go through. So a lot of people have been asking what uh, tuning flight essentially would look like on for plasma tree and this is just a little uh, line of sight flight in my backyard. I live in the city so I can't really fly too high. Um, I'm in Canada as well, so I mean, I've got the 250 gram weight limit. So, line of sight in my backyard is what I'm stuck with. Uh, but you can see that all I'm really doing here is giving little inputs on pitch and roll uh, just to make it move around. That's all you really want. I find if you give it little sharper commands, it, it's more of a jerky response and it's more that the pit controller has to deal with. Um, and it's more approximate to a real flight. Um, but yeah, just little blips on pitch and roll. Uh, as you can see, this flight is going to be a bit, little bit longer. Um, but 20 seconds is really all you need. And then after you've got this flight, all you're going to do is land, change your PIDs, and take off again. Then when you start tuning your quad, um, this is an image from the Plasma Tree Wiki. 
um, basically increasing P what it's going to do is it's going to increase the step response uh, like lead time like the amount of time that it actually takes to get from the zero point all the way up to one but increasing P also introduces the chance of this overshoot that happens here before it drops back down it's kind of roughens up this line as well so you don't obviously you don't want too high of a P then on the other side of things if you have too low of a P it won't have that quick jump and it'll have quite a slow climb up with a like long dragging arch that goes over that you know uh, it's a slower response <coughs> um, and it's overshooting slightly a little bit here and then that overshoot is persisting all the way through having a good P looks like this where you have as little of an overshoot as possible and the line itself evens out right afterwards and stays at this value of 1 for as long as possible. So this is my logs that I did. Uh, the first one I have P really low at just a value of 15 for pitch and roll and you can see that obviously was not suitable. This line is totally just ridiculous. It's completely out of the books. Uh, then when I went through and I started increasing P once I got to 50, this is the point where I decided that it was basically at its limit, maybe a little bit too high, so I knocked it down just slightly. So then after you've gone through all your logs and you've decided which one of these P values you prefer, um, I stuck with the value of 35 here when, honestly looking back now, I probably should have went a little bit higher um, to begin with, but it's not too bad to start. You might have different values for roll and pitch, but that's totally normal. Um, every quad's different, so every quad will need different values for its different characteristics. Um, then you're going to want to go out and repeat those same style of flight just with a quick little pitch and roll inputs. Um, and this time you're going to be increasing D term by a value of 5. So starting at a value of 5, uh, you're going to go up to about 30 or 40, um, and that'll give you 7 or 8 logs more to process. Uh, just run them through Plasma Tree, and again, look at the saved image files in the TMP file. Um, so looking at your D term, if you have too high of a D, it's going to over dampen things and it's going to bring this rising spike. Like this is actually where the peak is right here. This peak has over on the high or on the lower side that you see over here has been dragged down and it's actually creating a lag now because your D value is too high and it's dampening things too much essentially. So if D is too low, then you'll see here that it starts, uh, P starts taking over and it starts overshooting too much. And um, this is going to create oscillations essentially in your quad. Um, and again, having a proper D will basically give you a line that looks like this. Uh, again, little to no overshoot and then just a flat line after that, it's holding at a strength of one. So when I started, again, my D value is just at five. You can see that this overshoot is huge and it's not evening out this line very well whatsoever. I also actually increased my I value on roll in between just be, uh, I bumped it up five just to smoothen out this line a little bit because it was really, really rough before. Uh, a lot more rougher than pitch was. So then this panel or this uh, image is labeled high D term. Actually, this one's pretty good. It's not really over dampened at all. The rise is going right to one and then it's holding steady 
and again here um, my greater than 500 degree per second uh, RC commands were a little rougher but that was just because they were unintended to be honest um, but in the background you can see that the uh, sub 500 degree per second commands were all pretty hold, holding pretty steady um, if this was actually too high I would as, I would presume that this would be bringing down this uh, rise here qu quite a bit more and it might be dropping here and creating like I said before that leg um, that an over dampens system will give you so the D term that I decided to go with though was this one uh, 35 after you've tuned those two values basically you're just going to be fine tuning from there um, there's a log on RC groups uh, the beta flight pit analyzer forum um, I'll leave a link for that down in the video description and the key points in it were that if you're seeing overshoot in your step response you want you've either got a too high of a P or too low of a D so you want to either lower P or raise D if it's over dampened you want to either raise P or lower D and if you've got like quite a bumpy line after the rise you want to raise I a bit but if the I value creates a plateau on the peak of the rise, then you actually want to lower your I uh, quite a bit, about like a value of about 10. Um, and that's when I is starting to get a little bit too high. In the end though, I find that I is best tuned just in the fields. It's more about a feel thing, how loose or how controlled you want your quad. So. Uh, but again, a high I value can also create oscillations, so it might be something that you want to definitely, or you should probably avoid. So after fine tuning, I got my step response to look basically like this. Uh, rolls a little rough. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I was definitely gonna have to clean that up a bit. I got a little bit of yawing in at this time, so you can actually see that my yaw response is pretty good. Uh, but like I said, yaw isn't really. Uh, too authoritative over the quad, so uh, it's more or less irrelevant. That's why I don't really focus on it when I'm tuning it. I just set it to what I prefer and leave it. And then after that, what you're going to want to do is try to speed this step response up as much as possible. So then to decrease the step response time, you want to be increasing uh, P and D proportionally. So you want to be raising them at the same values. And I kind of did a quick little formula here. It's kind of basic, but I mean, uh, it's to figure out if you change one value, what you should, ch so if you change your P, what you should change your D to, and if you change your D, what you should change your P to, to keep them at the same uh, ratio. So basically you take your, if you're changing your uh, P value and you want to find your new D value, you take your original D value, divide it by your P value, and then multiply it by your new P value, and that'll give you your new D value. And the same is true, just reverse for finding your new uh, finding your new P term. Uh, while you're doing this, you want to be checking your motor temperatures, as you should be doing through all of your tuning, really, because you don't want to be tuning one value too high that's going to smoke your motors, anything like that. Uh, the filters nowadays are actually really good, so it's not as much of a possibility. Um, but it's obviously still there. If you crank your D term up way too high, that's probably what's going to happen. Um, so here is just basically what I started doing to fine tune or and increase the uh, values a little bit. So first, what I did is I bumped up my pitch eye and my roll eye slightly and uh, just to smooth things out as much as I could so then I started bumping up my P and D I uh, bumped up P and D 3 and on pitch and P and D 2 on roll and you can see down here I did get it a little bit over 500 degree per second reading as well so you see this orange line obviously um, 
roll is still pretty it's still pretty rough here so that's something that I'm gonna have to tune out as well uh, I'm just focusing on speeding the set response right now and then uh, I increase the values just by one again and you can see that it actually did smooth that out a bit uh, it's a quick step response teeny bit of overshoot staying at one this one my pitch is actually pretty clean here um, that's pretty much exactly what I want to see and I just want to keep pumping up from there this is a log just for an example of what a really really untuned quad will be doing uh, in the black box, black box logging my RC command is a little wild just because this quad was actually like really really hard to control so um, and you can see that's evident in the gyro reading here it's the blue line you can see that it's just awesome it's going up and down and it's all over the place the p-value is barely doing anything to try and correct for it and same with the d-value is just totally inactive um, and it's causing the quad to just wobble and be ridiculous uh, this is what you don't want obviously what you do want is something to look like this um, I've got my, well, I've got more RC commands in here because it was sharp, or more sharply tuned. Um, but you can see down here in the bottom left, for instance, on this, uh, what is this? This is a pitch command. Um, you can see uh, yellow is my RC command, and blue is the gyro still. And basically what's happening is this red line is pitch. So when I'm giving the command, P is telling it to go into the move, and D always opposes P, just to uh, uh, make sure that it's not too out of control. Um, and that's why, basically, they call it dampening. Um, it's really a light description of it, but anyway. You can see that the gyro is responding to the RC command very cleanly. When I go back down to the value of zero, the gyro is going to the value of zero, um, or like at the center line here. Uh, and then same as I reverse the move, it's almost a, just a flipped copy of this. So everything is essentially working really well on my quad. And that's basically it. So once you've gone through this whole process, you can reactivate some of the uh, settings that are in um, Betaflight 3.4, like the TPA, uh, your set point weight, and any gravity. If you want, you can reactivate your uh, or turn on try out Smart Feet Forward. Give it a shot if you want. Um, I would read up on it first and try to get a get a concept of what it's actually doing, because it's actually replacing your P term with a certain value, but only at a certain point. So that's where I think it was throwing off my uh, over 500, sub 500 degree per second logs that I was talking about earlier. In the video description, I've got a bunch of links, a uh, couple to UAV Tech, uh, Mark Spatz. Um, his videos are, he's quite more intuitive into what's going on than me. I'm just kind of going off a rough base of feel and experience and what I've learned. Uh, from Mark, Josh, uh, Flo, from Plasma Tree. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully it's useful to you, and let me know in the comments uh, how it works out.